evening, saints. Good evening, Calvary family. Good evening, friends and loved ones. Thank you so much for sharing this service with us tonight. For 158 years, it has been a tradition in the black community that we have this watch night service. Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation in September of 1863 to take effect on January the 1st. And so on December the 31st, slaves all over the South gathered together in songs of worship, in songs of praise, in songs of thanksgiving. They gathered together for prayer to pray in the new year and to pray for their newfound freedom and liberty. Indeed, for freedom, Christ has set us free. And so we come tonight, after 12 long, arduous months of 2021, still dealing with a pandemic all around us, we come after 52 Sundays, 52 weeks, we come after 365 days to this last service of the year 2021. We have so much more than tongue could ever tell for which to be thankful. So if there's a thanksgiving in you, if there's a praise in you, then come on tonight and join us for this last service of 2021 and this the first service to usher in the year 2022. Now before we begin, those of you who are sharing virtually, please, please hit that thumbs up button like our video tonight. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Calvary YouTube channel, please subscribe tonight. And please, please, by all means, share this video with someone you know and love. I want to thank God tonight. Over the year 2021, we have so much for which to be thankful. But I want to thank him for the members of our band, Brother Alvin Jones, Brother Lonnie Christian, Brother Wesley Cato, I just want to thank them all year long for their dutifulness and dedication and faithfulness. They have been blessed of God with wonderful, wonderful talents and gifts, and we just want to thank them for what they have given all year long. We want to thank Brother Joseph Rivera and his multimedia team. They have been professional and a joy with which to work Thank you so much, all of you who worked in multimedia all year long. We look forward to an even greater year in 2022. And finally, we want to thank our praise singers who have led us in the praise and worship of God. Um, they might change, uh, but all of them who are here tonight have been with us before, and some others who are not here tonight uh, have just made this year special. So we want to say thank you, praise team, those of you who are here tonight, as well as others who have helped us along the way. Now, with that said, let me get out of the way so we can get to what, amen, we have come to do. We have come to worship the Lord and to give him thanks and to ask his blessings on the year that he is to come. Come on, wherever you are, stand on your feet, clap your hands, open your mouth, and let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, God, because there's none like you. You are amazing, Jesus. You're wonderful, God. Hallelujah. There is none like you, God. And for that, we give you the praise, God, because you deserve it. You deserve all the glory, honor, and the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so glad I am a friend of God. And he calls me friend. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. It's amazing. Hallelujah. Yes. Wherever you are, come on, just put your hands together right here. Yes. We love you, Lord. Lord. 
song says, Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. Who am I? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me. Say, God Almighty, God Almighty, 
thank you, we thank you. We magnify you, we glorify you in this place right now, God. And we give you the highest praise, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. No matter what the circumstances are, we know that we can always call on you. Yeah. No matter what, you are still able to do just what you said you're going to do. Even though we don't understand it sometimes, we, but we know in the end, you are able to do what you want to do. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, you can ask. According to the power that worketh in you, yeah, and worketh in you, oh, oh, oh. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Hey, do we believe that tonight?
precipice of a new year you come through all of the trials all of the ups and downs of 2021 I want you to know that God is able this has indeed been a wonderful year and we want to thank all of you who have been supportive of the Calvary Church lo these 12 months 52 weeks we thank you for your tithes we thank you for your offerings and we ask you to be continually faithful in your giving. As you know, uh, it is our tradition here at the Calvary Church that at Christmas time we bring a special gift for the birthday boy himself, Jesus Christ. And so if you haven't given your gift for Christ at Christmas, please, please don't forget to do that. Use one of the uh, virtual mediums, cash out, Givelify, Venmo, or Easy Tithe, which is text to give. Uh, but we invite you, we ask you to be sure, and in your giving, just make a note uh, that it is, it is your gift for Christ at Christmas. On our birthdays, we receive gifts, but on his birthday, we give him a special gift. And so we pray uh, that you will uh, not forget to make a special gift for Christ at Christmas. Now allow me just to make a few brief announcements. We want you to know that Lord willing, our church will be open Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Many, many of you uh, are yet to return to church. This is a great time, the beginning of a new year. We invite you to make your debut, amen, your return, amen, this Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. Of course, our service will be broadcast virtually through our Calvary YouTube channel, but there is nothing, nothing like having you here in person. And of course, what makes it all the more special, it was not only uh, be the first Sunday of 2022, the Lord willing, but it will also be the first communion of the new year. And you don't want to start the year off without holy communion. So come on and join us. We're going to wear our mask. We're going to social distance. Uh, before each Sunday service, our sanctuary is sanitized and disinfected. Uh, we bought all of the special equipment 
which cost us quite a penny, I might add, but to make sure that when you come here, uh, this is a safe, safe environment. So we invite you to come. It's the first Sunday of the new year. It is the first communion of the new year. But thirdly, I want you to know that on Sunday, we will have the ordination of a very worthy person to our diaconate. Brother George Calvin Borns will be ordained a deacon uh, on Sunday at our Sunday service, and we are so happy for him. We are so proud of him, and we are thankful to God for him, uh, for his service these many years. He has proven. The Bible says, lay hands on no one swiftly. And so in our traditions, uh, deacons have to, what we call deacons walk or deacons on trial. That's a proving station, a proving time where uh, our deacons demonstrate that they are worthy of the office. And he has more than demonstrated that. He is so wonderful, his beautiful wife, his wonderful family. We are so glad to welcome them to the diaconate here at Calvary. And we invite you to come and be a witness, come and support and congratulate him. There are others uh, who are walking deacons, deacons in training, and uh, when the time is right, uh, we hope to ordain them as well. Now, tonight, I want to do two things, and I don't have much time because you know the bewitching hour is 12 o'clock, and we always want to be on our knees in prayer and thanksgiving to God when the clock strikes 12 and not only a new day but a new year is ushered in so i don't have much time to do all that i want to do but i'm going to try to give you as much as i can amen tonight before i share with you from the word of god i want to share with you something else you know, I noticed that every year people get off on this New Year's resolution. And every year, your New Year's resolution fails. You say, Reverend Hall, you don't know me. How do you know that my resolution fails every year? Well, I know because that's what the data informs us. The data tells us that within two weeks, before two weeks have expired, 80% of the people who started New Year's resolutions will have failed in their resolve. And it goes on to say that by the third week, about 99% of the people fail in their New Year's resolution. So I want to give you some hacks first on how to have a successful resolution this year. I want to give you a few hacks, and then I want to give you a resolution for the year that hopefully will be a blessing to you, and you in turn will be a blessing to others. Number one, number one, please note, amen, if you're going to have, amen, a successful resolution, then you have got to break the pattern of all of those failed revolution, resolutions. You know that resolution that you were going to lose 60 pounds or that New Year's resolution that you were going to start an exercise regimen or that New Year's resolution that, amen, you were going to, amen, be more committed to the life of prayer and to your spiritual life or that resolution that in the new year you're going to go to church, you're going to go back to church or that New Year resolutions perhaps to go back to school or to go to school or the resolution to start a business. But whatever that resolution is, I don't want to see you fail. I'm telling you to break the pattern. One of the problems that we have is that you're making a New Year's resolution when you should make a life resolution. What happens to your resolution when the year is no longer new? Ah, this is my New Year's resolution. Well, in June, the year is not new anymore. 
Where is your resolution? I tell you, break the pattern. Don't make a new year's resolution. Make a life-changing resolution. Number two, the reason scientists tell us the reason most people fail in their resolutions is that they don't plan for challenges, failures, and roadblocks. I want to tell you that the reason so many of us fail in these New Year resolutions is we think everything is going to go swimmingly well. But that's very usually not the case. Most of the time there's going to be somebody or someone that you didn't account for who's going to be a roadblock to your resolution. So understand, amen, maybe you had that resolution to lose weight, but you came off your diet within two weeks. It didn't last that long. Well, guess what? You're going to hit some challenges, failures, roadblocks. But this is what you do. Whenever you make your goal, if you fall off your horse, get back on it and start riding again. Know that, hey, you may fail. You may fall off. You may not keep your goal or keep your resolve. But that shouldn't be a reason to quit. That's only a hurdle in the road. Plan for challenges, failures, and roadblocks. And determine right now in your mind that whatever stands in my way, I'm going to overcome it and keep going. Number three, have something tangible on which to work. So many times we make resolutions that are vague, amorphous, um, hmm, hmm, resolutions that are opaque, dull. We don't, no, no. I don't want you to have some idea. I want you to have something very tangible. Remember your goal. Your goal must be realistic. Make sure it's a realistic goal. Don't give yourself a goal for your life change that you know in a thousand years. Okay, I've got a goal that this year I'm going to become a billionaire. Well, that's not realistic. Hopefully you do. And if you do, make sure you pay your tithe. But in case you don't, you need a life goal that is realistic, a life goal that is reasonable, a life goal, amen, that you can test. You should be able to test, am I reaching my goal? You should be able to test, have I made any progress with my goal? Your goal should be reasonable, realistic. It should be testable. And finally, it should be doable, amen. Make sure you have a tangible goal, not something that I want to love more people this year in 2022. No, you got to be specific. You got to lay it out, make it tangible so that you can test the progress or lack thereof that you have made on your goal. Number four, number four, the fourth hack I want to tell you, and this is so important, visualize victory. Every day, you got to go. I'm losing 60 pounds. Well, guess what? In your mind, visualize what you're going to look like when you lose 60 pounds. Visualize what people are going to say. They're going to say, Mary, is that you? Oh, girl, you look so good. You haven't looked this good in 40 years. Visualize what they're going to say, how they're going to respond. Visualize those new outfits you're going to be able to get into once you achieve your goal. If your goal is to graduate from college or to start a master's degree, visualize yourself walking across the stage and the chancellor calling your name and your family and friends and loved ones there to cheer you on. Visual, whatever your goal is, visualize your victory. Visualize your success. Make a mental image. This is what I'm going to do. This is what it's going to be like. 
always visualize. This is very powerful because I've been teaching our prayer band on Monday nights that when we pray for healing, one of the greatest things we can do is visualize the person for whom we are praying, not as sick, but as healthy and healed. Visualize them smiling. Visualize them standing strong. Visualize your goal. Amen. Number five is an old hack, but it still holds true. KISS. K-I-S-S. You know what that acronym stands for. Keep it simple, stupid. You know, sometimes we come... The new year is a time for new beginnings, new opportunities, new growth, a time to correct some of the mistakes of 21, whatever. And we've got all of these things we want to change in our lives. Don't try to change it. It didn't all go wrong at once, and you're not going to fix it all at once. Choose one thing, just one. Keep it simple, stupid. Just one thing that you're going to make a life change in 2022. Not a whole lot of things. Oh, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to read a book a month and I'm going to do this. No, no. Choose one simple thing. Be very clear. Be very focused. Be very specific. One thing. That's your goal. Your life goal. Not just New Year's goal, but your life goal for 20. 22. And finally, I want to tell you, make sure that you have a supportive community behind you. Make sure that you have a supportive community behind you. Don't get those friends who, when you fall off your diet, they say, oh, child, you shouldn't have been on that diet anyway. I knew you wasn't going to do nothing. Every year you come with this new year's resolution, and every year you just get bigger and fatter. You don't need people like, no. You need people who, hey, man, when you meet your challenge, when you meet your roadblock, your hurdle, when you fall off your horse, you need some folk who say, girl, that's all right. Look, you made it two weeks. We can make it two more. They say, look, brother, you can do this, and I'm going to help you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to be there with you. Make sure. You see, our community is our glue. They help hold us together. They help us to achieve those goals. So this New Year's, don't make a New Year's resolution. Choose one thing and tell God, God, I'm going to change my life. And make that one life resolution. Stick to it. You're going to have hurdles, you're going to have roadblocks, you're going to have setbacks. But with a loving and supportive community that's joining you in your goals, amen. I wish you every success. Now, I've taken up too much time. Let me at least read our text from tonight. For those of you who were with us on Sunday, you know we began with this text in the second chapter of the book of Philippians. This is an important text because scholars tell us that verses 5 through 11 were actually the words to a hymn that was sung in the early church. And actually, this hymn is older than any book in the New Testament. So that when you read verses 5 through 11, this song that they sang about Jesus, you're reading the oldest Christian document that we have. This document was a hymn sung in the early church. And if this was the kind of song they were singing back then, my God, how it stands in such contradistinction to some of the stuff we hear today because this song is really really serious. I begin at verse 5. Your attitude, the King James Version says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The NIV says your attitude, your mind, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ 
who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know what? I'm going to ask you to make one resolution. Uh, you might lose weight. You might start an exercise regime. You might go back to school. You might start a business. Maybe, maybe your goal for the year is to be a better father and get to know your children. It could be anything. But I want to ask you to make this your life resolution. And so I want to talk to you today about the year for others. The year for others. Our text says, let this mind be in you. Ah, saints, ah, I am hard pressed for time. I may not be able to get it all, but we'll be back Sunday morning. I want to finish this with you because it's very important. Amen. Let this mind be in you. I want to talk to you from this thought, amen, the year for others. That's the resolution I want you to make. Not a New Year's resolution, but a life resolution. Because our text is about Jesus, and he, he lived his life for others. Do you know that your outlook is going to determine your outcome. Or sometimes we say it like this, your attitude is going to determine your altitude. In other words, it all begins in the mind. Let this mind be. If the Christian faith is anything, it's a change of mind. It's, yes, saying no to your own mind and taking on the mind of Christ. It is as if God, it is as if God is thinking his thoughts in your mind. Let this mind, let it be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. If Christianity is anything, it is a change of mind. It is looking at the world differently. It is thinking new thoughts, different thoughts, godly thoughts. Let this mind be in you. Paul would say to the Roman church, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your what? Mind. Because being a Christian, being a follower of Christ, Lord have mercy, being born again, it is a spiritual transaction which occurs in the spirit to be sure. But also when Christ is in you, now you have a new mind and you got to decide that I'm going to live my life with the new mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, what kind of mind was it? It was always a mind for others. The famous theologian Karl Barth remarked that Jesus was the man for others. Do you know he never did anything for himself? Everything Jesus ever did was for somebody else. You remember that he was always reaching out to others. You remember, you remember that he was always thinking of others. You remember the tax collector 
the Jews hated him, but Jesus was the man for others. You remember, you remember that man at the pool of Bethesda who couldn't quite get in when the angel tickled the water, but Jesus was a man for others. You remember the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery, but Jesus was always the man for others. You remember the woman with an issue of blood who had spent all of her savings, all of her money on doctors after doctor and herb after herb and this treatment, that treatment and still no help and just a touch of his garment. She was healed. He was always thinking of others. And guess what? This Christmas time, Christmas happened because Jesus was thinking about you. He is the man for others. Remember Lazarus dead for four days, stinking in a grave, and yet Jesus came to Bethany, and there he called Lazarus back to life because he was the man for others. And look at him on the cross. They said to him, you saved others. Why can't you save yourself? But he never used, he never lifted a finger to help himself. Physician, heal yourself. You've healed others. Why can't you heal yourself? You remember one of the male factors even said to him, if you are such a big shot, since you're the shot caller, amen, a, a big shot, a baller, shot caller, whoever you are, Jesus, since you're such a big shot, why don't you come on down off the cross and while you're at it, get me and this other bum off the cross with you. Do you know that just with a blink of an eye, the snap of a finger, or just a word, he could have marshaled legions of angels to come down and wipe that place out. But Jesus never did a solitary thing for himself. Oh, what, 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 what commentary on our lives. What, what, what condemnation in our lives. You're planning for the new year. You're thinking about all of the things you want to do for you. You're thinking about all of the things you want to do for me, myself, and I. I'm saying if you have the mind of Jesus, it is always the mind for others. Think about people who need your help. And I, I don't want you to just send a plate by, but I want you to determine something tangible, remember, that you're going to make a commitment maybe to a ministry, maybe to a soup kitchen, maybe to a shelter, but you're going to do something every week for somebody else. My time is up, but I have three more points to give you, so I'll share that with you on Sunday morning. But before or between now and then, think about others and not about yourself. You know, when Jesus came, he came because he was thinking of you. When he died at Calvary's cross, he died because he was thinking of you. When God raised him from the dead on the third day morning, he got up thinking about you. No one loves you like Jesus. Oh, I want you to make a life change, not just a New Year's change a life change in 2022. You know what? I want you to think about Jesus. And if you haven't given him your life, given him your heart, on the precipice of this new year, this watch night service, I ask you to pray with me the prayer of salvation to give Jesus Christ your life. Think about the one who thought so much about you. You can pray this prayer. Just repeat it after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus 
to die on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life, Lord Jesus, and I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Live inside of me. Let the mind which was in you be in me. Thank you for what you did at Calvary. Thank you for what you're doing in me right now. And thank you for how you're going to use me in the year 2022. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tonight, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, yes. Or if in fact, amen. You said yes to Jesus. You've been thinking about him. He's been thinking about you then please let us know. We want to send you some information. Email us at info at cbcjny.org. Info at cbcjny.org. Or call us, 718-297-2301. And when you email us, when you call us, just give us your name and a number where you can be reached and our team will be in touch with you. Or if you could say, Pastor, I'm saved, I'm born again. I am a Christian, but I don't have a church home. Well, this is a new year. I can't think of a better time to join the Church of Jesus Christ. We invite you to join our church. Likewise, email us, info at cbcjny.org. Or call us, 718-297-2301. Leave us your name and a number. We will be in touch with you. Make that life change.
like no other. close your eyes. If you're with someone, just grab their hand and let's go before the Lord in prayer. Oh God, you've been our strength. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight. Lord, you brought us through 2021. You've been our strength. Strength like no other. Our trust is in you. The death angel has been flying all around us. But Lord, you've kept us. You've blessed us. You've been a hedge of protection. And tonight we want to say thank you. Lord, we know we made some mistakes along the way. Lord, we know we were not always pleasing in your sight. Oh God, forgive us tonight. Forgive us for our failure. Forgive us for our wrongs. Forgive us, Lord, when we ever loved our neighbor as we love ourselves. Lord, forgive us when we've mistreated others. Forgive us, Lord, when we have grieved you. Oh, God, forgive us. But, Lord, we thank you tonight that you look beyond our faults and you've seen our needs and you've brought us to another day and another year. And we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. Oh God, I lift up every person under the sound of my voice. Every home, every family that is represented. Lord, in 2022, I pray you will draw us closer and nearer to you. Give us, Lord, a deeper love that we might love you more tomorrow than we did today, that we might serve you more tomorrow than we did today, that we might worship you more tomorrow than we did today. Lord, I pray for your protection. Be a hedge of protection around all of your children, that no hurt, harm, danger, disease, pandemic, Lord, have mercy will come now your people Oh, God, I pray for your church. Oh, God, have mercy on your church. Lord, give us wisdom, understanding. Give us vision. Hallelujah. That we might navigate these treacherous waters. That all that we do, hallelujah, will bring glory and praise to your name. Father, tonight I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for Jesus. 
I thank you for that name which is above every name. I thank you for Jesus that you walk with us, you talk with us, you comfort us, you strengthen us. We thank you. Lord, be our peace, be our strength, be our joy. Oh God, somebody needs you today. Be our guide. Be our light in the midst of the darkness of this world. Lord, somebody needs you today. Somebody is sick and in need of healing. Oh God, touch as only you touch. Lord, somebody needs a financial blessing. Somebody needs a spiritual breakthrough. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, bind the hands of Satan that he will have no victory among God's people. And we're careful to give you the praise. Lord, we pray in 2022 that boys and girls and men and women who don't know you in the free pardon of their sins, open their eyes that they might see Jesus and receive him as Savior and Lord. We thank you, we bless you, we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That lily of the valley, that bright morning star, the fairest of 10,000, the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oh, somebody ought to thank him right now. We thank God for 2022. Thank you, Lord. 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 bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Come on, hit it. Let's go.